Sup fuckers and welcome to my new channel. And now that this video is officially unmonetized, I hope you guys all enjoyed that intro by uh, Big Dick Stacy. If you guys do not know, huge shout out to him for doing that. As well as a lookout today for on Twitter. I'm going to be doing a giveaway with him on Twitter because he did that nice intro for all of us. But anyway, bouncing of course today's episode of CSGO News, guys. A lot of big things happening in the CSGO scene. A lot of rumors that are slowly becoming true. A lot of big team changes that are still going through after this weekend. Uh, Blast Pro Series Istanbul, ESL New York, and big surprises in both those tournaments. The first of which was definitely FaZe Clan losing actually first of all to G2 in that series. I would say a close series going to map three and it's definitely a close map three as well but it really surprising they go out oh two they go out in last place for ESL New York and we saw a style of gameplay that was definitely different they also their second series a 2-0 sweep by team NRG NRG though looking throughout group stages very very dominant as well throughout some of their series so they looked very powerful so not going to say they were brutal losses but the, definitely the players that lacked on that team one of them being Nico it makes a lot of sense as it was confirmed this morning guys Nico has officially been IGLing for phase or at least so we think alongside that it does seem that throughout ESL New York that might have been why his fragging was was completely missing. If you guys saw some of the first matches he played, especially against G2, he lacked severely uh, in terms of fragging power. Alongside that, though, of course, many of you guys think that if Nico's going to be doing the IGL, well, then why do they have Kerrigan on the roster? I, I want to say that he still has a chance. I think, especially whenever you give someone a, a, a chance off the IGL role, you know, you had kind of Cold Zero and Fallen going back and forth with their IGLing roles, especially here with FaZe Clan, with how dominant they've been in the past and them trying this new style. I think Kerrigan still has a chance to prove himself despite the recent tweets. If you guys did see his tweet after that loss to G2, his mental state apparently not in the right place right now. And that it's really hard to see those kind of tweets. I do think he still has a chance though to show his rifle power, show his fragging power, especially now that the stressful role of IGL is off his shoulders. I, I give him a few a few more events on FaZe Clan, and I know a lot of people out there think it's an easy change of bringing in someone else that could be much better than him. And yes, that might be the case, but I, I, I think he has time to prove himself there, and that's definitely a change on the horizon of of course, Kerrigan no longer the IGL of that team, and obviously, most notably, probably the usual bottom fragger of the squad as well. He has lots to prove, and maybe the stress is even higher than it was before, but Nico is now the official IGL of FaZe Clan, and that means some different things coming in the future. And speaking of the future, it is now more apparent than ever that G2 will be making changes. I know a lot of us maybe saw this coming, and a lot of you guys want the obvious reasons out there. Get rid of either Smiths or Body, bring in Scream or Kiyoshima, or maybe get rid of both those guys and bring in both those guys. I, I, I also want to stress it's probably more obvious than just saying those things could come true, although it's what I want as well to see Scream and Kiyoshima on those rosters, especially after seeing Scream not do uh, too well with the Fnatic roster, even though it was their first event together, they did quite, I guess you could say almost quite terribly there. It does seem more likely, uh, especially because G2's very owner, the CEO Ocelot, many of you guys probably know his name, he took to Twitter to say these things, and it is now more obvious than ever, especially when a CEO and owner actually publicly just actually publicly states his disappointment in the team. We don't see that too often, so of course they go out here as well as in 6-8 place and go out of group stages as well. Uh, after two losses, again, after that first best of three win against FaZe Clan, you think, okay, an easy run for them. They then lose consecutive series, guys, to both Liquid and NRG. Of course, uh, still very two, two very good teams over there, but unfortunately enough, it does seem very obvious G2 will be making future changes. I would have to say that Body and Smiths are probably your likely targets, although we don't really know much right now. Again, we also had Ocelot's tweet the week before that, saying there was two French flags, who's going to be changed out? So maybe these plans were already, they were already in the works, and maybe that's why um, this team didn't play too well after their first best of three win against FaZe Clan. No one knows the exact details, guys, but it seems pretty obvious as of right now that both FaZe Clan and G2 will be making changes. I think G2 probably faster, and then FaZe probably following if Kerrigan cannot pick it up. And also other news out there about other team changes. Of course, Kadian from Rogue going to North to replace MSL over there. Who's going to replace him on that Rogue roster? It does seem pretty official as of right now, thanks to Ryan at Rush B. I'm going to link his Twitter down below if you guys want good CSGO updates. He's very good at what he does and actually just got back to reporting some things. So on top of that, he did actually comment it was actually Rogue's coach. They were having a group vote as who's going to join the team as their new IGL. It was between Crystal, of course, formerly of Imperial. He's been bouncing around from team to team. Um, so obviously, we also was with Steel's team, Ghost Gaming, for a short amount of time as well. It was either going to be Crystal or FNS, and apparently the team slightly voted towards. It was actually an equal vote, but apparently uh, the coach's vote does rule, guys. Crystal should be joining Rogue in time for, of course, these next few tournaments, guys, as their newest IGL. Again, I'm not really sure in terms of opping wise who will offer that team as well. I just still thinks I still think on paper, especially. 
given what Kadian did the past few months, it's no matter who you're going to sign here for a North American team, it's probably going to be a slight downgrade until they play together. But Rogue, that should be their new roster. And also, very lastly, in CSGO news, uh, kind of the most surprising news, actually, because no one's really been asking questions about SK Gaming. They had a spot in both ECS as well as ESL Pro League, and it seems for now they will not be fielding rosters. I do think, allegedly, it's actually INS Esports, another big or Brazilian organization. They've actually signed that no-tag roster with Phelps and KNG and those guys who are still... Uh, they still don't have an established IGL, in my own opinion. I don't think they're going to be doing too dominantly in ESL Pro League. Allegedly, though, that team has been bought out by INS Esports. Again, another rival Brazilian org out there. They'll be joining ESL Pro League. And I think, of course, they've actually bought the spot from SK Gaming. So a huge investment for them to actually sign that roster and then to buy the ESL Pro League spot. If these guys don't go to playoffs, I'm not really sure what their future is. And if you look at their past results together, ever since uh, FNX did leave that roster, as well as I think BIT went to Team 1, they haven't really done too much. Although, even with FNX and BIT on the team, they didn't do too much results-wise either so a very interesting thing here to see this team actually buy that spot out um, we're going to see how they do though it does seem SK Gaming for the time being and for the prolonged period of time will not have a CSGO roster which is very crazy to think about and that's the end of today's episode of CSGO News I hope you guys all enjoy again I'm going to remind you guys in these next few videos I am going to be doing CSGO News only on my new esports news channel so hope you guys all enjoy that I'm still trying to figure out what I'm going to be doing on this channel in terms of CSGO gameplay remember if you guys are new to the channel or maybe you haven't seen this before I'll be moving all my CSGO news to esports news channel if you want to subscribe to that. I'll be still doing content on this channel. I just need to know what I can do around CSGO that's not news related and that'll be for the prolonged period. But for the next few weeks, I'll be on this channel doing CSGO news like I usually do. So don't worry guys. Um, but when that time comes, you guys know who's going to take over. Sup fuckers and welcome to my new channel.